Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and today we're going to do the last video in the machine applique series. We've done concave curves and convex curves and inside points, and what I'm going to show you today is the trickiest part, the trickiest shape to do in applique, and that is an outside point. I'm going to be referring back to some of the previous videos, so I'm not going to repeat what we've done there. I'll put links to those accompanying this video, so you'll be, you'll, it'll be easy for you to go back and find those. But right now, let's tackle some outside points. Okay, the basic technique is the same as what we've done so far. So I've already got my shape traced onto freezer paper and fused down to the fabric that I'm going to use. And I've got it trimmed around the edge with a little bit more than a quarter of an inch seam allowance all around. I also, since this is a concave curve here, I've also gone in and snipped that seam allowance. These are techniques that I'll, sh I'll have the links to the videos that cover those. What we're going to handle today is this point. This is going to be a flamingo's beak, and this is the tip of the beak, and I want it to be fairly pointy. So that can be tricky to do. I'm going to use starch on this to help hold it in place. So the first thing we're going to do is fold this tip over. So we're just going to fold the fabric over that seam allowance and press it in place. I'm just going to fold it over and hit it with a hot iron. And that's going to be pretty well stuck down there now. Now I need to just pick one curve or the other and I'm going to pick the, con the, the convex curve here and I'm going to hit that with the starch. And that's going to make this loosen up, but that's okay. I can hold it where it was and fold this over and now start ironing it down. Again, this is, you've done this part before. This simple, this is the simplest kind of curve to do. Just make sure it's nice and fused down. And now what I need to do is look at this flap that's folded over. And it's actually extending just a little bit past what the, the curve of the shape of the beak is going to be. So I'm going to snip the extra away, get some nice sharp scissors, and just snip some of that extra seam allowance away. Now I'm going to be able to fold this over without having that extra bulk in there. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to hit this with starch and fold all of these flaps over. Again, I had to do the flaps because this is a concave curve. So I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit this end real quick. Since the re-wetting it, the starch will tend to loosen it up. I'm going to fold this first flap over. I'm not going to worry about the fact that the seam allowance there is extending past that. I'll touch that up later. Now I'm going to do each of these little flaps. I'm going to try and stay out of the way of the camera. And also try and keep it from steaming up. Go back and just hit the whole thing. And now you can see I do have this mess here where this flap, if I flip it over, you'll see that that bit of seam allowance is extending past there. So I'm going to just lift that flap up a little bit, cut off the extra, and if you need to, it doesn't look like I even need to here, but if you need to, you can go and hit that again with some steam and just make sure that it's really pressed down. But I'm going to flip the whole thing over and let you see it now. And it's not the pointiest point. I actually had, there was a little bit of roundness to the shape there. And if it's uh, a thicker fabric, you're not going to get a perfectly sharp point there, but for most purposes, this is going to be really nice. Um, I'm using a heavier weight cotton twill on this, and that's going to keep the point from being perfectly pointy. I didn't do anything to this end here, because this is the part of the beak that's going to be tucked underneath the front of the bird's head. So I want that to be um, an excess flap of seam allowance that's going to go under there. But this is where it's all going to be stitched down, is all around this edge and here. So now you have a nice sharp point. It's great for bird's beaks, animals ears, um, the ridges on a crocodile's back or the pointy crocodile teeth. Um, you'll get a nice nice clean point that way without any frayed edges showing which is the, the normal thing that happens when you have outside points that you're appliquing. 
So that's how I do outside points with machine applique. You'll get a sharper point, a pointier point, if you use a thinner weight fabric. I was using a heavier weight fabric for mine, so the point is a little rounded. You can get perfect, perfect, perfect points with needle turn applique, but that is a lot slower than the machine applique. So this is a method that you can use to get a fairly pointy point with no straggly threads at the end, which is usually the problem that happens with machine applique and pre-folding those points over. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next time.